so hello friends uh, i think you have uh, already seen that in the previous video we have done array linear search array i already told you it's nothing but a single uh, dimensional array i am talking about double dimensional we will do later on single dimensional array it is just like a rectangular box divided into slots one two three four for example i am taking four slots so single dimensional array is just like a rectangular box divided in a uh, number of slots or divisions in which uh, variables variables are you cannot tell that it's variables but positions are there 0 1 2 is the third position so there any values can be entered okay i already gave you the basic concept of array okay so this is single dimensional array any values can be stored based upon the data type of the array which you have declared okay now we are just considering int array integer array it is so integers will be there in each of the blocks each of the segments each of the cells whatever you say okay only integers will be there for example i take some numbers for example i take 10 uh, 7 5 uh, then then we can take we can take also take a nine okay let's see now it is integer type of array all are integer integer type of array so we have done linear search that means searching an element maybe an element a is entered by the user that search whether a a can be equals to nine also whether in nine is there in the array or not so if each position means if the name of the array is m then m comma i i will be a loop for loop which will continue from 0 to 3 okay first it will be 0 it will check that whether 0 number position is equal equal that number a or not if it is then it will display and that yes it is there in that array so that is linear search linear search means what that will follow a straight line path we will follow like this we will search whether this element is there or not whether first zeroth element is there or not first element is the element to be searched or not or second element is that or not or third element is that like this in a straight line we will move in that array from this 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 this, this and all those things okay now we will do binary search we will go in two ways linear search is uh, you can say less complicated Binary search is also easy. Don't worry. I will explain it to you the basic concept about binary search also. Don't worry. Don't worry. Binary search is when you have a long array. Maybe the length is, for example, 500. If the length, if the length or the size or size is 500, then then you have to go straight line. That means 0 to 499, you have to go that is much uh, difficult to go okay that is much much difficult so the basic thing i will show you that how binary search works how binary search works is see this position is known as this is zero this is known as lower bound lower bound or lv is the variable we use generally any other variable you can also use doesn't matter it's just a variable lower bound means the the zeroth position the very very first position is the first block that's position number is zero so lb equals to zero we will write this position is known as upper bound means the last position it is in this array it is third so we will write ub equals to three done okay upper bound we got lower bound we got that means the zeroth position the very first block we got the position of that block will take position number will take because actual numbers we don't know which are present in that array that the user will enter okay so lower bound we got we have already done because the array we will declare so we know the size from zero it will be zero starting from zero it will end in the size minus one size if the size is four then minus one that is third it will be okay another int variable we will take that is p you can write any other name also doesn't matter but i am taking p okay. so lb plus ub by 2 by 2 now see what will happen lb is 0 ub is 3 0 plus 3 is 3 3 by 2 how much it is tell me 1.5 but 
this is a int this is int variable it will not take this one it will not take 0.5 so what it will take it will take one only one only that is the first position is only taken okay first position is only taken the first position is only taken there is the array one two three the first position will be taken that means p equals to one for the first time okay now see i am just giving you the basic concept how the thing works outside how you can imagine that this thing is going like this or like this how okay so that even if you change the variables even if a different kind of program is given the binary search is given in a different way or anything but if the basic concept is clear to you you can just make the program frame the program in the examination hall that i want okay so just see the drawing and you will understand it okay just see the drawing and you will understand it if here is an array one two three if there is an array one two three four i am taking now if i take three it will be much more easier for you leave that example and see here it's very easy and simple way to understand this is a lower bound i already told you this is lower bound this is upper bound this is the last value last position this is the first position this will be zero and this is zero one two this will be two done okay zero one two and divided by two is the first one okay zero one two is the first the thing is that the concept is that p will be the p will be the middle one p will be the middle one or the very middle median you can say also the average you can say both the lower bound and upper bound we will add and we will divide it by two the average of lower bound and upper bound that is only p so p is you can say the mid position p you can say that p is the midpoint of array p will become the midpoint of the array just see that that p will become the midpoint of the array now the number to be searched if it is n for example n is the number the user entered let's see whether n is there in that array or not whether n is present in that array or not so what you will you will do if the mid position now if n is less than p that means what tell me not double less than wait ha huh. if n is less than p n is less than p that means p is 1 2 p is here p is situated here in the mid position n is less than p that means n is on the left side of p right or wrong n is less than p if this is if this is p mid position is p so if n is less than p obviously n is on the left side of p n is on the left side of p n is on the left side of p so the concept is then we don't need to search the elements from here to here here more array more slots can be there could be there but for uh, you to understand i am just given three slots only to me for make you to understand that means so if n is the number to be searched and p is the midpoint and n is less than p the condition is if n is less than p then obviously n is on the left side of p n can be p also n can be uh, n is less than p or is equals to p so if n is we will just see whether n is less than p or not okay if n is less than p then obviously n is situated on the left side of p obviously Achha. that means we don't need to check whether the numbers on the right side of p on the right side of mid position on this side those whatever numbers are present we don't need to see them only because obviously they will not be the number to search in those numbers we will not find n obviously because n is less than p so it is of course that we have to take n is take the slots which is present on the left side of p 
on the left side of P. So what we will do? Again we will run the loop by we will write U B equals to P minus one. That means what? P I told you is the mid position P. If n is present on the left side of P, then if we decrease low the upper bound was here na upper bound was here the loop was running from here to from here to here the loop was running but we found that n is less than p we found that n is less than p if n is less than p then n is present on this side so this we don't need to check so the upper bound if it is present here no problem no problem na so we can write that n uh, ub equals to p minus 1 it will become here ub equals to p minus 1 okay now what will happen now if n is greater than p then the opposite thing will happen if n is greater than p then obviously n is present on the right side of p n is present here there are three slots so i can say that n is present here otherwise you couldn't have it or we can say n is here also n is somewhere in here here we, this one we don't need to check so this was lp now we don't need this part so we can just write lb we can just write lb equals to p plus one it will just increase p plus one these two conditions we need to give and just write inside those conditions that if n is greater than p then lower bound equals to p plus one if n is less than p then lower upper bound equals to upper one will decrease upper bound equals to p minus one ultimately what will happen you know ultimately it will happen that n equal equal p will happen if it will happen one time it will happen now because it is just decreasing you see just it is going smaller to smaller if n is greater than then it, it has gone here if it is not present this side okay then ultimately this is the p this p is only n so if a long array is present a very long array is present maybe this is the array i'm writing it um, horizontally okay if very long array is present a long array is present and p is somewhere here and n is greater than p then obviously n is present somewhere here obviously n is present somewhere here you can turn the screen and see it properly n is present somewhere here it can be p also it can be in these two slots also it is somewhere here if n is less than p then n is somewhere here so this was lower bound this was upper bound but if n is greater than p we don't need this part obviously so you can easily write that l in that situation okay if n is greater than p we can easily write l b l b equals to p this is lower bound ha huh? this is n is greater than so n is here so l b equals to p plus p plus one and if n is less than p that means p is on this side then we can easily write that upper bound equals to p minus one this is minus okay this is minus then right in p minus one done this is also done this is also done now if n is greater than then this will happen there is less than then this will happen ultimately what will happen ultimately p is also changing every time p is always be the average value means uv is changing lv is changing and every time p is also changing because p will be equals to uv plus lv by 2 p is also changing ultimately what will happen do you know that n will become equal to p that time we will say we will take a flag variable a variable just to see that whether p has become equal to n or not we will write then if p is equal equal n then k equals to 1 now outside the while loop we will write outside the while loop we will write if n equal equal p then number found just in the found else not found as simple as that so hope you got the basic idea of how
how this works basic idea this is very important if you can just imagine this if you can just imagine an array and the things in it that will be much easier for you much easier for you okay you will just finding the see i'm giving a very uh, simple diagram p is the midpoint acha we are writing it sequentially wait we are writing it sequentially lb is the lower bound lower bound ub is the upper bound upper bound it can be anything uh, i have taken a three slot of array that means the size was 1 to 3 so the upper one will be 2 because the last position is 2 okay p is the midpoint of that array that bag you can say the rectangular box box structure the midpoint of it we got now the entered number was n if obviously if n is greater than p then n is present somewhere here somewhere here n is present obviously if n is less than p this is n is greater than p if n is greater than p and obviously if n is less than p n is present somewhere here n is present somewhere here this is only that array you can see this whole thing is an array p is the mid position u is the upper bound l is the lower bound that means zero position u is the last position number p is the midpoint of if you can just find the midpoint by lb plus ub by 2 so you got the midpoint of that array now obviously if n is greater than p then it is present somewhere here if it n is less than p it is present somewhere here n is present here then if we see that n is present here then obviously this part becomes valueless the lower part becomes valueless so we will take l we will take we will just decrease the ub up to here only we will take lb and ub up to up to here up to here we will not consider below it but if n is greater than p we will not take lower bound here we will take lower bound here so we will consider this position only from below this position only the upper part is useless for us okay so this becomes very easier if we have a very long array if we have a long array these are very small small array 10 20 the length is but for example if the length is 500 1000 then what will you do so for those kind of conditions this is used this binary search is used binary search means two times we are searching one this side one this side and then we are decreasing and finally we are getting a value finally we are getting whether the number is there or not so binary means we are dividing the array into two parts and then we are searching that whether it is in this part or in that part if it is in that part then this another part becomes useless if it is in this part then this part is useless if and if and if it is in this part then this part becomes useless so it reduces our work that we don't have to check continuously that array total uh, the we don't need to travel from the zero position to the last position of that array okay so the calculations or the program becomes very easier very small or very convenient you can say or time saving also so this is a convenient way and most of you can find it is very difficult or something like that so i just explain the basic concept or the basic idea that how it works how you need to imagine this and then you know already programming how to do java basic things you know so you can just frame the program in your own way i my motive is just that you can frame the program write the program in the examination hall itself don't need to think that which variable i used there what i did there this that this you can just make it think it in that examination hall and instantly you can do that programming instantly you can do that programming and you will get full marks on programming don't worry okay hope you like the video and thank you for watching stay safe bye bye